Hi everybody! Welcome to the Unit 2 PowerPoint on Second Language Acquisition. Last week we talked about first language acquisition. Some of you talked about how learning a first and second language are similar and different in the wiki this week. Here are some of my thoughts. Both have communicative input. Both have developmental stages that we can see. Now, that does not mean it will always be a clean, linear process. But in general, both in the first and second language acquisition, we move from words to phrases to sentences. And both are resistant to external manipulation. For example, my boy's grandmother worked and worked when they were little to get them to say grandma. However, without any extra encouraging, they both said papa. The same is true with a second language learning. A common error when learning English is subject-verb agreement, such as not putting an S on the end of a word. If the student is not ready for this instruction, the teacher will waste valuable time and energy trying to teach it. Now that we've seen some similarities between learning a first and second language, let's look at the differences. Unless there are severe cognitive difficulties, Everybody is proficient in their first language, whereas not everybody becomes proficient in a second language. Second language learners can rely on what they know from their first language. They already know the concept in the native language and just need the English vocabulary. For example, a student may understand the concept of fractions, but just not have the English vocabulary. That is different from a student who does not understand the concept of fraction. Also, Second language learners understand that sentences consist of nouns, verbs, adjectives, etc. Even though the adjectives may be in a different place in the sentence, they still understand that, that there are certain rules and expectations when communicating. Second language learners don't have the luxury of going through a babbling stage and just playing with the language. Let's look at the different st stages of second language development. The acronym PEPSI ah, will help you remember the stages. We'll talk about the pre-production, early production, speech emergence, intermediate fluency, and finally advanced fluency. So sit back, enjoy a Pepsi, and let's review the stages of second language acquisition. The pre-production stage may last anywhere from 10 minutes to about 3 months or so. And again, it depends on the person. English language learners are learning a lot, but they are not ready to produce language. A lot of teachers think that they may not be learning anything, but they are soaking up a lot of information. The next step is early production. Students are beginning to speak, but in just words or phrases. For an example, the student may say drink or get drink when asking for permission to go to the water fountain and get a drink. During the speech emergence stage, ELLs are feeling more comfortable in speaking. They still may make grammatical errors though, as you can see in the last bullet. In the intermediate fluency stage, the vocabulary has greatly increased. However, although 6,000 words sounds like a lot, the average first grader should have about 6,000 words. So imagine if you're coming into the United States when you are beginning, say, 10th grade. You have a lot of catching up to do to the other 10th graders. It is in this stage where a lot of our students seem to get stuck. They seem to be pretty proficient in English, but may not be doing very well in school. People who do not understand second language acquisition often say that that student knows English. He or she is just being lazy. And in a few slides, we'll talk about the difference between social language and academic language. And finally, we get to advanced fluency. This is where we're trying to get students to. This is where we're trying to get students to. However, remember, they still need extra support from the classroom. Make sure you're doing effective practices such as using lots of pictures, realia, manipulatives, cooperative learning. Those are all good things for any student, but especially our English language learner. As you read in Chapter 2 this week, 
you will see the acronyms BIX and CALP. There's a difference between the social language BICS, which is Basic Interpersonal Communication Skills, and Academic Language CALP, Cognitive Academic Language Proficiency. Many times students seem very fluent, but have not developed the academic vocabulary needed to be successful. Think about this question. In your school, how much time elapses before an ELL is in the mainstream classroom with no support? That's why we need all teachers to be aware of second language acquisition process. Jim Cummings, who coined the terms BIX and CALP, developed the iceberg model. If we imagine language proficiency as an iceberg, there are two levels. Above the surface of the water would be conversational proficiency, including the cognitive processes of knowledge, comprehension, and application. Regarding language processes, one would find pronunciation, vocabulary, and grammar. Below the surface of the water lies the academic proficiency, which includes the cognitive processes of analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. The language processes located here would be both functional and semantic meaning. To achieve complete language proficiency, one would need to develop both parts of the iceberg. This also shows Cummings' Common Underlying Proficiency Model, or CUP, you'll see capital C-U-P. The two icebergs that you see in the top are separate. That is, two languages are visibly different in outward conversation. Underneath the surface, the two icebergs are fused in such a way that two languages do not function separately. Both languages operate through the same central processing system, which again is the cup. To think about it even further, what we don't see under the water can be different for different students. For example, you might have two ELL students in your classroom that may be from the same country, be the same age, but the first student has a well-developed CALP in the native language and the second student does not. These students will have different needs. Student 1 already has the background and concepts. He will just need to learn English. The other will need lots of background information, scaffolding, instruction to learn the concept and the English. A hot topic in the U.S. now is the use of native language in the classroom. You read about the different programs used to educate ELL and saw Collier's recommendation of dual immersion in the article. However, because of societal and political views, the use of native language in the classroom is some, in some states has been abandoned. However, I think if you are able to use the first language, it will greatly support the learning of your English language learners. As students become more comfortable in the classroom with task and with English, the use of the native language will dissipate. Now, sometimes you may not know the first language and be proficient in the first language. There are still a lot of things that you can do. And that's the whole um, idea of this course, is to give you some different strategies. And we'll really get into that in our next unit. But now that we've reviewed the second language acquisition process, I want you to start thinking about this question. With the information that you now have, what will you do differently or better tomorrow for your students? And as I said, hopefully we will continue learning about ELLs and some method and instructional materials that we can use to help them achieve more. Thank you so much for listening to this PowerPoint. Any, excuse me, anytime you have any questions, just make sure you give me a call or an email and I'll be happy to help you. Thanks a lot.